Welcome back. This is Joe Blasco with Kevin Haney. <laughs> All right. Well, we're back. Listen, we finished up with uh, with the uh, Dick's, uh, not uh, the Richard Corson, Richard mm-hmm. Corson book, where it says in the in the conclusion of the book, and this is volume uh, or uh, the second edition. The one I learned from was the second edition, uh, and it said a makeup that calls attention to itself is not a good makeup. It defeats the purpose. And what we find happening these days uh, are obviously makeups that are becoming so realistic, more and more realistic, and so anatomically correct that obviously they do not attract attention to themselves. And because of that, they may not even be considered as contenders for awards is where we were going with that. Yeah, you have to, you really, it's important that if you think you're working on something that that would be award worthy, go ahead, toot your horn a little bit. Uh, uh, Ultimately, it's, it's what's on film. Right. But a book will point people to, yes. hey, I didn't know that guy was wearing a nose in that. Yes, or, exactly. you know, look at all of that stuff. And I worked with Jason Robards. Uh, you know, he, he, we, we talked about self-aggrandizement, both in a makeup point of view and also in an acting point of view. Yes. That the minute you do call attention to it, it's, it, you've, you've defeated the purpose yeah, of your exactly. art. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Um, your career, you know, has gone on and on. You've done so many things, Kevin. Like so many makeup artists in this business, you've also had the great opportunity of working with Mike Westmore mm-hmm. at Paramount on Star Trek: Deep Space Nine. Tell us about that. How did you? How did you meet Mike Westmore? Hmm. I'm, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> All I know, all I know is that he, I think you that materialized. I know. Well, you Beam know, I think it was you know, unlike a lot of my peers, I think the most important thing a makeup artist can do is to what we call day check. Yes. I think that going out, uh, the late Richard Snell uh, was a firm proponent of this as well. You can learn nothing if you're an island unto yourself. Exactly. If you're always the supervisor, you don't know what it's like to be the private. That's right. I love nothing more than being on the list, getting right. the call to come right. in and work on right. on Star Trek. Uh, and if you were in prosthetics in Hollywood in, you know, the 90s, you definitely worked on Star Trek. Yes. Uh, and I believe I just came in and Mike was just, first of all, he's a terrific designer. Yes. He knows how to run a show. Yes. And he does it with just, you know, class uh, with Grace. a capital C. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And, uh, you know, the, 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 the great thing about it was I would come in and he'd hand me something and he never really had to correct it. It's like he yeah. would just go, you're doing great. Yeah. It's just like that. Nice work, that, kid. Nice Klingon. Nice Ferengi. <laughs> nice, you yeah, know, right, Bajoran right. nose. Right. Whatever it was. What a tremendous compliment. No? It was. You know, and, to have this man and there would also come be by pe- and, and praise your work. And there would be people that would come up afterwards and say, you did that guy, didn't you? Yeah. And that's kind of weird to me in that whatever it was, people could could see it. I mean... Sometimes you you wish that you could keep a little lower profile, but you know I'd be in the middle of uh, you know background doing Bajoran noses. They were these noses that looked like Venetian blinds. They yes, were yes. little bitty pieces in the middle of the face. But yeah. of course, that's part of what I did really well when I did the Babe. I would do noses like I would do. I mean John. Uh, Goodman's wearing a nose through that whole picture yes. in all different but kinds of lighting, know. but you don't know. And yeah. when he's young, he's got strips here, he's got lips. Tom Case, another great makeup artist, uh, was really disappointed when the babe didn't get enough uh, uh, accolades. He said, for goodness sake, Goodman's wearing lips through that whole picture. You know, right? And who knew? And who knew? Right. Who, nobody knew. But getting back on track, I do these Bajoran noses, and I love doing them, and I love being there. And you'd be with these other makeup artists that thought I should be doing a principal, I should be doing the ma- the lead on this, <laughs> and I would take pride that the director would look at a bunch of Bajorans and choose mine yeah. to bo- do a close up on or yeah. whatever, yeah. and it was great. But it was not about me, it was about just doing an opportunity to do really good right. work. Serving the art. 
Yeah, Mike asked me to help him with uh, the last episode of Next Generation yeah. because I normally worked on uh, uh, Deep Space Nine. I did a couple Next Generations, but the last episode we got to age all these people. Yes. And it was really, really, uh, it was really fun and it was great to uh, work with LeVar Burton yes. and, and Gates McFadden. Yes. And Mike just, he'd let you go with it if you could do yes. it. It was great. But I didn't get a chance to work on Enterprise, though, to my depression. Dismay. Depression. <laughs> Let me ask you this. There are a tremendous amount of really talented makeup artists at work that worked under Mike's guidance on Star Trek and mm. Deep Space Nine. Did you find that there was a, a sense of competition between the artists? <sighs> That's a toughie because... There's always a sense of competition with artists. Could you feel uh, but the competition? I, I, I can see. Well, no, you could. I mean, there are certain personalities that you know are best left not mentioned by name. But you know, there was a jockeying for top Position. dog yes. because, in a sense, once once the episode was broken down and and, and uh, uh, designed. Yes. There were makeup artists that thought that they could jockey to a more important position yes. when we were all on the same level, yes. but there were those that felt that they could elevate to a, a more competitive level. How did, how did, if I may interrupt, how did, how did you observe Mike Westmore as a department head handling that? Mike did the thing that I think is the only way to survive doing a show like Star Trek, and that is let the people work their own difficulties out. Yeah. You cannot interfere. Then if you, if you get involved in singling people out, yes. you're, you're, you're only helping the situation. Yes. So it was interesting to see Mike's laissez-faire yes. uh, way of doing that work. Right. It's like in another sense, it's like, yeah, people did filter out. You became a problem. Yes. You weren't invited back. Yes. You know? Ultimately, and that's, that's, ultimately, that's, that's what, what that's happened. Howard, and as long as you didn't embarrass him yes. with production, yes, exactly. You, it was an easy show. You yes. just had to, you know, you had to show up at god awful hours of the morning or evening, uh, had the second worst call I've ever had doing Cardassians at one in the morning. <laughs> this, the first is, is Planet of the Apes. The second, we, were, we flew into Hawaii and our call was 11 the night before. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> now that's a hell a of a call. <laughs> it was 11 the, the night, night before, before for a 7 a.m. call oh. the next day. And that was horrible. But anyway, uh, Mike, Mike does a great job, yeah. and anybody that says he, he doesn't, he, oh, you know, they no. don't know what they're talking no, about. He is, he's got to be the absolute consummate department head, yeah. uh, as, uh, beyond being a brilliant makeup artist. Uh, mm -hmm. I watched him work one time uh, at ABC Television. He came in, and he probably doesn't remember that I was the little boy that was sitting in the corner down in the dressing room at ABC while he applied a W.C. Fields mm -hmm. nose and makeup to, I can't think of the fellow's name who was the host of one of the game shows there. And Mike, if you're watching, I'm, <laughs> now you're remembering, that was me watching. Rudy Horvath just put me down there and he says, go down there and watch Mike Westmore and learn something. And I did, <laughs> you know, so it was, it was fabulous. And then this man, uh, uh, you know, went on to do so many incredible, wonderful, creative makeups. He's got more Emmy nominations and more Emmys than I believe that anybody yeah, in the history of makeup He's has. the Walt Disney of, yeah, uh, absolutely. of, 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 of absolutely. makeup world. But also on that note, his, his, his late brother, Monty, was yeah. also a, a, Brilliant. a super Such gem. Such a sweet man. And a just gentleman. And tremendously talented yes. and, you know, unswerving in his ability yes. to help people. Yes. It didn't matter. You know, he'd help hairstylists with wigs, and yes. he had the confidence to go in there yes. and just make the show better. Yes. He could easily be a second banana because yes. he was a number one banana that's in right. anybody's book. Yeah, that's right. I, 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 I only knew Monty from visiting with him at the trade shows. And I was there at one of the trade shows, and Namie, 
uh, from NAMI's, the, the actual NAMI, from NAMI's uh, beauty uh, center, put Bill Tuttle and me on display. <laughs> <laughs> Bill Tuttle and I were sitting in the booth and signing, uh, I don't know what we were signing, the, the autographing the books, uh, programs of the trade show. And I decided that I had enough of that. So I excused myself and I wandered around and I ran into Monty. And I stood there with Monty and we must have talked for like, I don't know, 45 minutes straight. And it was one of the best experiences that I feel that I've ever had. And uh, I, I, to that point, I had not really known any of the Westmores. I had made Frank Westmore up uh, when he wrote the book, The Westmores of Hollywood. He appeared on AM Los Angeles at ABC. And I was the makeup artist on AM Los Angeles. And I did his makeup. And so I, that's, that was my first experience being with a make, with a Westmore and that was doing his makeup. Don't think that yeah, I was, I, would, I was like yeah. this. You know? <laughs> no, thank and you. That, that was great. So, so, but, but visiting with Monty and he was uh, everything that you, you say he was. Yeah. And Mike is also that same way, a, a, a fabulous artist and a gentleman yeah, and a real class act. They're brothers and, and, and the, the, the tree doesn't, fall very far. You yes. Know, the fruit doesn't fall that's far from the tree. The tree. That, that's actually and what a tree the Westmore tree is. Yes. Um, I'll tell you, uh, we're going to have to stop just for a second. Mm -hmm. And um, we'll be right back. And so you, you think about what we're going to be talking about next here. And all of you out there, I'm going to switch to mm -hmm. this other camera. And all of you out there, don't you go away. We're going to be back with more of Kevin Haney. <laughs>